Welcome to episode 46 of Game of Thrones Abridged on Alt Swift X. Today we are reading Eddard 12, A Game of Thrones, and I think this is a really good chapter. We have a really fascinating clash of characters here, some really, some really top-shelf, vintage, well-aged drama. Um, and I think it's very enjoyable. But first, we need to get through a brief scene with Eddard Stark and Pycelle. So, Ned is wounded. He had, uh, he had a horse, a Neddy. A Neddy landed on Ned's leg. Uh, and so Ned's leg was crushed and broken. And so Pycelle, the resident healer at King's Landing, has been tending to Ned's wound. Pycelle is telling Ned that, oh, pain is a gift from the gods. Pain shows that the flesh is healing. Um, uh, sleep is the great healer, Eddard. You should have lots of sleep because sleep will heal you. Sleep is the great healer. And Ned says, well, I hoped that the great healer was you. You're meant to be fixing my bloody leg, aren't you? Why can't you be a bit better at that? And so there's this undertone subtext here of, um, is Pycelle competent in treating Ned's wound, and, and, and is Pycelle even motivated to treat Ned's wound properly? Is Pycelle uh, doing everything in his power to help Ned heal, or is it possible that Pycelle is maybe even sabotaging the healing of Ned's leg? We know that Pycelle, we find out later that Pycelle deliberately deprived John Aaron of proper medical care so that he died of the poison quicker, um, and he did that because he thought it was in Lannister interests for Jon to die, assuming that Cersei had poisoned Jon Arryn. Uh, so it's conceivable that in this situation, Pycelle might figure that it's in Lannister interests for Ned's leg to not heal quickly or properly. So I wonder if Pycelle might be sabotaging Ned's leg. Um... But anyway, so that so that's happening, and then Pycelle says, "Oh, by the way, a letter arrived, um, and I think you should probably know about it. Uh, it's from it's from Lord Tywin Lannister to the to the Queen Cersei, uh, and it says that Tywin is really pissed off about the whole your wife abducting uh, Tywin son Tyrion and the fight with Jaime in the inn. Tywin's." a little bit cross. He's a, he's a little bit upset about that whole situation. Uh, and he just wanted to let you know that, that he's a little bit cross. Um, and, and, and Pycelle reminds Ned, uh, oh, and also Tywin's angry that, that Ned has sent men after the mountain Gregor Clegane. And Pycelle reminds Ned that, well, I did tell you that Tywin's not gonna like it if you sent men after Gregor, but you did it anyway. I told you so. Uh, and Ned has no patience for Pycelle's bloody finger wagging, so he's, so, so, so Ned says, let him be wroth. Let Tywin be angry. Let him eat cake. Let him eat his cake of rage. Uh, I don't care, is what Ned says. Uh, and, and Ned mentions that his leg is throbbing, and every time his leg throbs, he remembers Jamie Lannister killing Ned's men. Uh, so, Ned, so Ned's decision making is definitely impacted by his injury. Uh, and he's 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 more uh, 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 harsh and unforgiving, uh, and perhaps less subtle and wise uh, because of the pain in his leg. Um, and and Ned sort of defiantly says that, well, look, if 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 Tywin wants to be pissed off about me bringing rightful justice onto the head of the mountain, then he can talk to he can take it up with the bloody king, King Robert, because me and Robert are like this, we're BFFs to the end, mate. So King Robert's got my back, uh, and of course, Robert's kind of a shitty ally. Robert's a bit of a shitty king, a bit of a shitty political player, and not he's not much of a wingman. He hasn't really got Ned's back in this situation. Uh, and, 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 and Ned goes so far as to say that, that Robert would enjoy 
uh, waging war on Tywin if Tywin was to dispute the justice of killing Gregor Clegane. So Ned's talking some pretty big words for someone who's only got half a leg at the moment. Ned's 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 talking some pretty serious smack, uh, which is probably very unwise saying that shit to Pycelle, who Ned knows well is a Lannister toady. No doubt N- Pycelle will be relaying all of this to Cersei. Uh, so this is basically a terrible idea what Ned's doing. Um, and, uh, and, and, but yeah, Ned does think, Ned does think to himself, yeah, Pycelle's gonna tell all this shit to the Queen, uh, and also Ned admits that he's not quite as confident of Robert as he pretends. So Ned's trying to put on a brave face, possibly wrongly, and so, and so when Pycelle leaves, Ned tries to have a little think in his nitty little noggin, and he's he's really trying to sort out the maths, he's calculating the vectors of probability, he's trying to strategize uh here um uh and and he's trying to he's trying to think he's finding it difficult to think with the pain and the painkillers the meds by cells given him and the wine it's clouding his mind uh and he tries to think what would john aaron do in this situation because of course john aaron was like a father figure to ned because he grew up in the eerie with robert as a foster um and and he thinks what would john aaron do wwjd what would john do uh he thinks um, uh, so John Aaron was, was reputedly quite a sort of wise and sensible bloke. Um, sadly, his influence is gone after his death at the hands of Lysa, his wife. Um, and he reflects on the truth that he's just finally realized last chapter. Uh, after Sansa said that, that Joffrey is not at all like Robert, Ned finally realized that Joffrey is in fact not Robert's son. He is a, he is a child of Lannister incest. Um, and, and so, and so, and so Ned reflects on the gravity of that secret. Um, he, he, he assumes that the reason why John Aaron was killed is that John Aaron uncovered this secret, that John Aaron, uh, and, and in his partnership with Stannis Baratheon had figured out, uh, that, that Joffrey was, was a child of incest, which indeed John and Stannis did, I think, um, and 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 Ned assumes that the reason why John Aaron was killed was for knowing that secret that he was killed by the Lannisters. Although of course that's not strictly true. John wasn't killed by the Lannisters. He was killed by Peter, more for his goal of creating conflict between Stannis, between the Starks and the Lannisters, and also you know as part of his machinations in the Vale, uh, getting in with Lysa and all that shit. So it's not entirely clear if Ned's correct in thinking that the Lannister incest is the secret that killed John Aaron, but whatever, he is correct to identify the gravity of this fact. And then Littlefinger knocks on the door. Knock, knock. Uh, and Littlefinger comes in, being all fucking smarmy and smiley, uh, as he is, uh, and he goes, and he sort of blathers on about, oh, I'm going to go to a feast tonight with Lady Tanda Stokeworth, because, of course, Tanda is trying to convince Littlefinger to marry his her, her daughter Lollis or whatever, and and he's going, oh, I'm going to, they're going to have a fatted calf for, for dinner tonight, and oh, and it's going to be so delicious. So it's kind of hilarious that while... What, hilarious slash enraging slash unjust that while Ned is dealing with all this heavy shit, Littlefinger is sitting back enjoying some some fatted calves, having some nice meals. Which when of course Ned, the situation that Ned is in is partly engineered by Littlefinger. So so Littlefinger has engineered this conflict between Starks and the Lannisters by doing things like lying about the knife that he said was Tyrion's. Littlefinger's called, caused all this mess, and meanwhile he's just sitting back, eating eating some delicious food, and just watching the fireworks that he's set up. So he, there is no character more smug than, than Peter Lannister. Peter Baelish, sorry. Littlefinger. Um... So that's happening, uh, and and Littlefinger makes all these irritating, sarcastic comments about how, hey Ned, if you wanted to keep that leg in one piece, how about you not let a horse sit? <laughs> not <laughs> that's what he says. He says, well, what? Don't let a horse fall on your leg next time, silly Ned. And Ned has no patience for this fucking irritating banter. 
Um, and and Littlefinger sort of emphasizes, oh, shit's, shit's stirring, man, the pot's boiling, the realm grows restive, Varys is hearing ominous whispers, Tywin Lannister is gathering swords, which is all what Littlefinger wants, by the way, he all wants the war and the chaos. Um, and, and Ned's like, by the way, wh- where, where the, wh- where is the king right now? Shouldn't he be doing some kinging? All this shit's getting real. Why isn't the king here to back me up? My wingman, Bobby B. Baratheon. Um, but, but, but Peter's like, nah, he's off, he's off hunting. He doesn't want to, ha- the king doesn't have time for politics. He's off hunting. This is like the equivalent of the president out golfing. Uh, that they the media loves doing all those numbers on the, the 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 number of days that the president has spent golfing in his presidential term, and and having the king off hunting in the woods is the Westerosi equivalent of that. Uh, so the king is more interested in golf than politics. Um, and 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 Peter talks about how Robert just wants to kill stuff in the woods. Uh, so interestingly, one of the few things that Robert and Joffrey share. Uh, is a is is a love for killing things. Joffrey Joffrey really managed to, to 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 get the best of the worst of both worlds from his supposed father, um, Robert Baratheon, and his actual parents, the Lannisters. He inherited all of the Lannister pride uh, and 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 sociopathic lack of empathy for non Lannisters uh, but he also gained Robert's love for violence and killing though not though none of his martial skill Joffrey really is the worst pot like he, he lost that genetic lottery so badly um, imagine it, it could have gone the other way imagine if Joffrey came out with with all of the Lannister uh, prettiness and intelligence, because you've got to admit that the Lannisters certainly are smart and sly, uh, but he also came out with the Baratheon strength and, and integrity, if the Baratheons could be said to have integrity. Uh, the, the certain, certain, you know, they've got a, they've got a certain chutzpah, you got to admit. They've got a bit of go, the Baratheons do. They are of the storm and all that. Uh, imagine if Joffrey was a good guy. This whole story would be so much more pleasant for everybody. What if Ned was like, well, Joffrey is an incest baby, but he's a pretty great bloke, and I'd like to go have a drink with him instead. Anyway, um, and and so Peter's reporting on Robert's uh, hunting movements, and he's saying how, well, they were out to chase this white heart, this special shiny Pokemon, uh, but it, but the heart was killed by something else, and now Robert is chasing a monstrous boar deeper into the forest. They saw some monstrous boar, and Robert wants to kill it, uh, which is, is, of course, the boar that ends up killing Robert. So there's a irony, or at least a sort of poetic loveliness to the fact that Robert is hunting down the th- the thing that is to kill him. He is chasing his own death, which is something that many people do. Many people put a lot of effort into into pursuing the thing that is their downfall. Uh, Robert caused his own death by stupidly blundering into an unnecessary fight. He drank himself to the grave. He hoard and feasted and drank and hunted his way to the grave, as many people do with all of their own, our own various sins and vices. Uh, Robert, like many, chases his own death. Uh, Freud and that fucking, the Freud's death urge, isn't that what he calls it? Uh, so Robert's off doing that while Ned is left to deal with the actual serious shit that's going on in the realm. Um, except some of the people have come back from the hunt. Joffrey has returned and Sandor has returned. Sandor Clegane the Hound. Uh, and Robert is concerned by Sandor coming back. Um, uh, and, and he also reflects that, um, uh, like Peter Baelish points out, I wonder what Sandor Clegane thinks of Ned ordering Beric to kill Sandor's brother, Gregor Clegane, the mountain. Because, of course, Sandor hates his brother, Gregor, who burned his face. Uh, but Peter, Peter thinks that Sandor would want to kill Gregor himself, so he might actually be angry at Ned for ordering the death of Gregor Clegane. Um, it, it would be interesting to see what Sandor's feelings are about the potential death of his brother. Um, 
but then but then you know peter sort of does his thing he sort of injects a bit of tension and 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 concern and drama into the, into the situation and then he sort of says toodaloo i'm off to have a bloody dinner <laughs> good luck good luck with all this misfortune that i've arranged for you ned that i know you'll fail miserably at good luck with all the shit that's about to go down i'm just going to sit back with a big old bucket of wings and watch and point and laugh with my little finger. Little finger's pretty evil, I would say. He's just pulling up the popcorn to watch the murderous dance of death that he set in motion. Peter is a bad man. Uh, anyway. Uh, and so Littlefinger leaves, uh, and, oh, well, on the way out, he points out the book that Ned's been reading, the lineage book that Ned sort of helped use to figure out the whole Lannister incest thing, and he sort of jokes about how long and boring the book is. And for a moment, Ned considers telling Littlefinger all about the investigation and about the Lannister incest and all about that stuff, but then he decides that he doesn't trust Littlefinger as well he shouldn't. So Ned's looking for allies right now. He's desperately short on friends. With Robert off in the ma- in the woods hunting, Ned's really got no one to back him up. He hasn't even got Jory uh, or Alan or any of his guards and stuff. Uh, Ned's really fucking shouldering the burdens on his own as ever at the moment, which is not a good situation for Ned to be in. He needs allies, but he doesn't trust Peter. He doesn't trust Varys. He doesn't trust Pycelle. Barristan is like the only person in King's Landing who Ned actually likes, but Ned figures that Barristan is old and rigid and would just tell Ned to do his duty. He doesn't think that Barristan would be much help, uh, so he doesn't seek Barristan's help either. Uh, and, and, and Ned is basically thinking that his plan at this point is that as soon as the king returns, as soon as Robert returns to the capital, Ned will tell Robert about the Lannister incest, and then Robert would deal with it. <laughs> That's sort of Ned's game plan. Uh, he doesn't seem to think too many moves ahead of that. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, Ned's daughter Sansa and Arya will be taken away to safety. Uh, and then last night, he reflects that Ned had a dream about the death of Rhaegar's children, Rhaenys and the baby Aegon, uh, who were killed by 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 Gregor Clegane and Armory Lorch uh, under Tywin Lannister. And he remembers Tywin Lannister presenting the dead children, Aegon and Rhaenys, to Robert before the Iron Throne. So Ned has a real thing about not killing children in the same way that Batman is determined to not kill the criminals in the same way like Batman you know how Batman never kills the Joker even though the Joker kills like millions of people like Batman Batman is not a utilitarian he's more of a uh was it Kant Kant who was the one who was like there are certain rules that you must absolutely not cross that's more Batman's philosophy isn't it because he's like you must never kill anyone even if killing one person, the Joker would save millions of lives in the future. You know, like the trolley problem, where you can either kill one person who's tied to the tracks uh, in order to save five other people, or not do anything and let the five people die and save the one person. Batman would let the trolley hit a million people before pulling the lever to kill one person, the Joker. That's... which is plainly fucking dumb. Uh, but that's how Batman works, and I think in a way that's kind of how Ned Stark works. Ned Stark would rather fight a war. I mean, I mean Tywin. Tywin would tri- would would switch the trolley tracks every time, right? Because Tywin argues that the Red Wedding was was ethical because Ned because Tywin says it's better to murder a few hundred people at dinner than it is to murder thousands of people in a war. And that's what Tywin did. By by doing the Red Wedding, arranging the Red Wedding, and killing the Stark leadership, he prevented greater wars from happening in the future, which is a pretty reasonable utilitarian argument, right? It's, a, it's, it's less net suffering. Uh, doesn't take away the fact that Tywin is a cunt, uh, but, it, but it's not an unsound philosophical argument, I think. Uh, but, but Ned would probably not agree. Ned's a bit more principled or ideal. I can't remember the jargon, the terminology, but basically Ned doesn't like killing kids, is all I'm trying to say. Uh, and, and so, uh, and so, yeah, Ned's like, we've got to save the children. Won't somebody please 
think of the children. Uh, and, and, and Ned is hoping that Robert will be a good ally in his attempts to protect the innocent. He thinks that, that, that Robert Baratheon can be merciful. He, so, so there are lots of people who Robert has forgiven over the years, enemies of Robert's who he turned into friends. Uh, there's Pycelle and the Spider, who each served King Aerys, but, but Robert allowed those people to, to serve him instead. And there's Balon Greyjoy, who was a rebel, but then but then he forgave him after he beat them in the Greyjoy Rebellion. And there's all these other lords and people who, who Robert has defeated, but then allowed to remain his friend over the years. As long as a man was brave and honest, Robert would treat him well and and forgive him, which which on the one hand is like virtuous and great that Robert's merciful, but I think but I think it's telling that 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 Robert talks about as long as a man is brave and honest. Robert isn't just merciful to anyone, he's merciful especially, I think, to people who are in keeping with his masculine values of honor and bravery. He likes people who are like him, or like his ideal self. Robert is not so forgiving with people who don't fit into his narrow sort of system of the way men should be. Admittedly, though, he does pardon Varys, and Varys is the opposite of Robert's masculine ideal, so maybe maybe that's not so much of a thing. Uh, I think Robert definitely does, though, have a certain bias, and Ned the same has a certain bias towards people fitting into his narrow idea of men are men who hit things. Not as much patience for those effeminate men with no balls slash too much brains like Varys and Peter, who admittedly are kind of cunts in this particular story. Uh, and... Ned thinks about what Robert will do when he finds out about the secret of the Lannister incest. He thinks that Robert will kill them all, Ned realises, because this crime will be something that Robert will not forgive. Uh, so it's a bit ominous. Ned thinks that maybe Robert will go ham, <coughs> ham, ham, uh, and and kill a whole bunch of people when he finds out that, that, that Prince Joffrey is not really his child. So that might be a bad thing. But Ned thinks he has a duty, he has a responsibility, he's honour-bound. Uh, and, he, and Ned also realises that, oh, probably the reason why Bran, people tried to kill Bran, was because Bran figured out or saw something related to the Lannister incest. And in, in, and in that respect, Ned is correct. Uh, and then Ned is reflecting on the, the, the leader of the, of the Stark Guard right now, the household guard, is Fat Tom, uh, Tomard. Uh, uh, and, and Ned reflects that's probably not a good thing, because Tom is not one of his most stalwart guards, not one of the most competent men in Ned's service, is Fat Tom. And he thinks for a moment, you know, maybe I shouldn't have given away half my guard to the City Watch, and then sent off with Lord Berwick. Maybe I shouldn't have just given away a whole bunch of my military strength right as this really important political stuff was going on. D do you think, Ned? Do you think? Ned, 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 Ned made some really bad strategic decisions by giving away his men and his strength right before he needed them most. Uh, and this observation is, uh, yeah, a little late for Ned to realise that. Uh, so anyway, he's like, all right, Tom, Tomo, mate, you got to do me a favour. you got to escort me to the godswood. Uh, I know my leg's fucked up, so you'll have to sort of, you know, hovel me, you know, carry, sling me over. Uh, it'll be great. So Thomas like, yep, let's 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 hoof it down to the Godswood because of course King's Landing, the Red Keep has a Godswood, a little mini forest, in it, uh, which isn't in the show, unfortunately, sadly, uh, because the scene that's to come in the Godswood is kind of cool. Uh, so they head down to the Godswood, uh, despite Ned's painful leg, and when they get there, uh, Ned gives a paper to Tomo and says, "Yo, can you deliver this?" Uh, to the queen, and Tom says, neither rain nor snow nor, nor fleet of sleep of night will stay this messenger from his his duty. Neither paper cuts nor nor barking dogs will stop this postman from get. And, and Ned's like, that's enough, just just deliver the message, mate. And so Tomo's like, yes, sir, uh, and, and, he, and he hoofs it. Uh, uh, and the message is to the Queen Cersei Lannister. Ned has re has requested the Queen to come to the Godswood to have a little chat. Uh, and so she does. The Queen Cersei Lannister 
comes to the old gods. Although, although to, to, to the gods' wood. But while she's coming, Ned, Ned sits in the gods' wood and has a sort of peaceful moment amongst the trees, and he feels the presence of the old gods. Do you think Bran Stark might be watching now? Or Blood Raven? Some presence is felt in the old gods, and Ned feels a little bit more peaceful when he's amongst his gods, uh, which is good for him, <laughs> for what little good it does him. Uh, and so, and so Cersei turns up, and she's like, "What? What do you want? Why are we in this bush? I'm, I'm a Lannister. I have no interest in trees, mate. I'm not a hippie. I'm not a tree hugger like you Northerners. What are we doing here?" And Ned's like, "We've got to have a chat." Uh, but he also has a perv. He also looks at how graceful and beautiful Cersei is. Uh, and after he's had a good perv, he says, "Uh, by the way, uh." I know that you're an incest demon who's been banging a brother and lying to the king. And Cersei goes, hmm, so you do. Uh, uh, what, what you gonna do about that, mate? Uh, and, and, and Ned, uh, and Cersei's like, uh, well, by the way, I'm better than you, blah, 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 I'm a Lannister, I'm proud, uh, my brother's better, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, but but basically, she, she she then admits that yes, uh, I've been committing incest with my brother Jamie, uh, and why the fuck not? Uh, the Targaryens did it because, of course, the Targaryens did for centuries uh, marry within the family in order to keep the bloodlines pure. Got to keep that that fucking whatever the the whatever race theory they're using to justify the bloodline ideology. Uh, and she and she talks about. How Jamie is 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 uh, her other half. They're twins, of course. Don't forget, Jamie and Cersei are twins. They shared a womb together, and when Jamie is inside Cersei, she feels whole. And, and when she says that, that that Jamie and Cersei came into the world together, some people wonder if they might leave the world together. That perhaps Jamie might kill Cersei and that they might die in wildfire together or something dramatic like that. Uh, and Cersei also admits that, that Bran was pushed from the tower because he saw Jamie and Cersei fucking. And so Cersei's shamelessly admitting to these crimes and Ned sort of gives her props for for admitting to that stuff straight up without beating around the bush. Uh, and, and Cersei... And Cersei says, do you love your children? And Ned's like, yeah, well, it's it's my jam. I'm all about that kid love. No, he doesn't say that. He says, yes, with all my heart, I love my children. And Cersei says, no less than I love mine. And Ned reflects on like, yeah, well, you know, there's a certain legitimacy to that. Cersei has got to do what she's got to do to protect her kids. And if that means, you know, killing Bran in order to keep the secret of her Ch children's birth, which is necessary in order to protect her kids, then like, well, Ned sees a certain legitimacy in that. He, he And he thinks to himself, well, would I try to kill someone else's kid if it meant that I could protect my children? Uh, and he basically just, just says, I pray, I pray I never have to, I never have to make that decision. And he also thinks, what would Catelyn do if she had the choice of killing John or protecting her own children? Which is a really pointy question, because of course a lot of people wonder if R plus L equals, if R plus L equals J is true, and Jon Snow isn't the son of Ned Stark, but is actually the son of Lyanna Stark, why doesn't Ned tell Catelyn? Because Catelyn believes that Jon is Ned's bastard. Well, this question here, would Catelyn have Jon die if it was necessary to protect her children, I think kind of answers that question. Uh, ne because there could be a situation in which, I mean, let's say that 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 King Robert suspected that John was uh, that John was a Targaryen bastard and therefore wanted to kill John. Uh, maybe there would be a situation in which Catelyn would 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 hand over John in order to protect her own trueborn children. That's that's a not entirely implausible thing that could happen. And 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 Ned wants to preclude that from ever happening by just letting everyone believe that John is indeed Ned's bastard. Ned as Ned says, some secrets are safer are safer kept hidden. Uh e where even the people who you love don't know the truth. Um the the truth of John's birth is too 
big a secret to just go telling anyone, even people he trusts, like Cat. Um, but anyway, so so Cersei's admitting to all these crimes, um, and she admits that all three children, Joffrey, Marcella, and Tommen, are all Jamie's children, not Robert's. And and Ned reflects on how this relates to to the seed is strong, which were John Aaron's last words. Uh, it doesn't mean that Robert Aaron is a strong child. Uh, it means that the Baratheon black hair gene. Uh, in this particular Westerosi Punnett Square, uh, always seems to overpower the Lannister blonde hair gene, uh, which you know I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I mean, George Martin is no 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 Gregor Mendel, um, and and a, and a, and a, and a prince is not a is not a pea plant. But the point is that um, children of Lannisters and Baratheons tend to have black hair, and the fact that Joffrey and Marcella and Tommen do not have black hair, they have blonde hair, indicates that they are not children of Robert Baratheon, they're actually children of Lannisters, Jaime and Cersei. Um, and Ned asks, like, how, but how is it that you never had any trueborn children with Robert? And Cersei's like, oh, well, you know, we normally don't have sex, like, actual sex for, like, years, because I hate him and he's gross. Uh, and one time we did get pregnant, but I had it aborted. Uh, she had an abortion to uh, kill... Let's not use overly... She has an abortion to get rid of Robert Baratheon's child in her. Interestingly, in the show, uh, that's not what happens. In the show, she says that she did have, she did give birth to a child of Robert's, a, a beautiful boy with black hair, but but that it tragically died of a fever or something. And she expresses a lot of emotion, a lot of sadness about the death of, of that child, um, which I think makes Cersei a more, uh, a more, a more, a more forgivable, a more What's the term? Humanized character in the show. In the books, she's more cold, uh, and she does not want any child of Robert Baratheon inside her. Um, and Ned reflects on the gravity of this truth and how it's such a big deal. Um, and and he also thinks like, and, and and Ned asks like, what what is even your beef with Robert though? Why do you hate him so much? I mean. I mean, especially when you first got married, like, he was such a, he was so fucking babin, man, he was young and strong and a great king, like, why, why did, why do you hate Robert Baratheon so much? And so he says that, well, on our wedding night, first time we slept together, uh, the, the, the name that Robert whispered into my ear as we made love for the first time was Lyanna. Lyanna Stark, because Robert Baratheon is still in love with, or at least infatuated with, Lyanna Stark, this 16-year-old sister of Ned, uh, who Robert was betrothed to, uh, and who died giving birth to Jon Snow, apparently. Um, and so Cersei felt betrayed by, by, by Robert saying that, and, and it represents how Robert's continued infatuation with Lyanna seemed to prevent him from being intimate and open and honest with Cersei, and that's part of the reason why there was such a rift between Cersei and Robert. In the show, again, there was a, there was a scene in the show that wasn't in the books that is a really good scene where there was a conversation between Robert and Cersei, uh, where they talk about their relationship and they talk about how loveless it is, and they talk really candidly, and and they ask, you know, and they talk about how you know could this ever have worked between us? Could we ever have truly loved each other and been a, a, a healthy relationship? And Robert says, no, no, it couldn't have. And Cersei seems sad about that. But, 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 but that was a great scene in the show because it really humanized both of those characters and really explored their relationship in a way that we never really get to see in the books, which is a shame, I think. Cersei's certainly colder and harder to relate to uh, in book one, I think, compared to the show. Uh, but anyway, so Cersei hated Robert for all that shit. Um, it, it, it's mentioned that Cersei's eyes burn like green fire, almost as though Cersei might do something with wildfire in the future of the story. Uh, and, and, and Ned feel, Ned is, Ned feels grief over the mention of Lyanna Stark as ever. Um, and, and, and then Ned says, all right, okay, so the cat's out of the bag, the elephant's out of the sack, the gopher's out of the, out of the satchel. Uh, the spaghetti's out of the hoop. The 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 the, the alligators out of the trunk. Uh, the truth's out, 
um, and and therefore you know what I must do. Uh, by which Ned implies I have to tell the king about the incest and shit's going to go down. And Cersei's like, must do? What, 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 cuck? Cersei, Cersei would have called Ned a cuck if, um, if this book, if this, if this, if the setting, if this, if, if Game of Thrones happened on Twitter in 2017, this is an adaptation that someone needs to make. Uh, one, it'd be like, you, you ever see those, um, like people have written Hamlet in emojis, abominations like that. Some one day, someone's gonna do the entirety of Game of Thrones in 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 Twitter, uh, and when they do this bit, uh, Cersei's gonna call uh, Ned a cuck because Cersei's like, do what you must. What kind of what 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 is you? You if you're a real man, if you if you're a real individual, you don't do what you must. You do what you want to do. You, you you make your own calls based on your own desires and you answer to no one else. Fuck honor, fuck duty, fuck a code. You only truly are yourself. You are only truly living when you do what you want to do. Uh, and of course, that's sort of Cersei's thing. She just does whatever the fuck pleases her own values and her own intuitions. Whereas Ned... Uh, feels bound by codes of honor and ethics, protecting his family, obeying the king, being an honorable warrior. That's how Ned lives. But Cersei, in contrast, is all about doing, chasing her most fundamental desires for pride and love and power and status and vengeance and cruelty and hate. Cersei's such a fucking twisted knot of all these frustrated emotions and she has no qualms whatsoever about pursuing the realization of her most un unrestrained emotions cersei is un well she's restrained she is rest she doesn't want to be though because cersei's whole deal is that she's constantly repressed by all these frustrations against what she wants she wants to 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 openly love Jamie Lannister and be with him, but she can't because society refuses to acknowledge their relationship. And she wants to be powerful, but she's a woman in a society where only men can rule, and so she's denied that. And she wants to embody uh, the Lannister pride that her father Tywin has 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 invested these notions in her of being strong and status and and power, but she can't really do those things because she's married. To to fucking King Robert, and he's a bloody doofus, and she wants to protect her children, but all these political realities take her children from her. Marcella is shipped off to Dawn, and Tommen is influenced by the Tyrells, and Joffrey gets poisoned. Everything that Cersei wants most. Rhaegar, she's in love with Rhaegar, but then Rhaegar is taken from her by Robert, the man who she ends up marrying. Cersei is such a knot of frustrated desires. I think that's part of why she does such harm to so many. Uh, so anyway, uh, and so and so Cersei's like, fuck it, don't do what you must, do what you will. A real man does what he will, not what he must. And then Cersei brushes her fingers along Ned's thigh, the gentlest of promises. Uh, and touches his face and touches his hair and 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 Cersei tries to like seduce Ned lightly or hint at seduction uh, and she's saying that look look we don't neither of us want war here why don't you should be hand of the king uh, and 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 we can be friends we can work with each other your wife's a thousand leagues away you want some fuck is basically Cersei saying you want some fuck is what Cersei's saying to Ned but she's also saying look don't don't reveal this secret, and we can be friends. We can look after each other. We don't want war, which is actually one hundred percent true. It is in neither the Starks or the Lannisters' interests to start a fucking war. They should just be peaceful and good to one another. But of course, Ned suspects uh, that John Arryn was killed for knowing what Ned knows now, and he suspects that if he were to make peace with the Lannisters, Cersei would just have him killed. Which, in fairness. She probably would, um, but 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 the words as he says are true. It would be good for the Starks and the Lannisters if they just made peace. But that, sadly, is not going to happen. Um, and so 
and so Cersei slaps Ned when Ned suggests, oh, did you try and come on to Jon Arryn as well? Uh, and so Ned rejects Cersei's seduction because he lives by an ethical code. Batman. Brr. Um, and Cersei slaps him, and, and Ned dryly says, I shall wear that like a badge of honour, referring to the time that Robert hit Cersei. Call back, um, and so, and so Cersei gets mad, and Cersei, and Cersei gets all uppity, and she's like, fuck, you think you're so bloody honourable and, and, and righteous and noble, but you ain't shit, man, you're a hypocrite like the rest of us, because you can pretend to be all noble and, and honour-bound, but you have a bastard, I've seen your bastard, Jon Snow, who's the mother? of your bastard, Ned, honourable bloody Ned. Where was your wife when you were fathering Jon Snow, Ned? Who who was the mother? Did you rape some Dornish peasant while you were fighting in Robert's Rebellion? Is that is that the father of Jon? Or was it a whore? Was it a prostitute? Some tavern slattern that you slept with because you were bored of the absence of your wife? Or, or did you have sex with Lady Ashara after you killed her brother, Arthur, the grieving sister. Did you comfort her with your dick, Ned? Did you comfort her with your frosty northern dick? Is that what you did to Father Jon Snow with Lady Ashara? And then Ashara bloody jumped into the sea. Was that because you took her son, Jon Snow? So Cersei throws all the fucking barbs of gossip that she's heard about who the parentage of Jon might be. And Cersei's like, how honourable are you, Ned Stark, if you slept with some woman to father Jon Snow? How honourable are you? So she's sort of going, and she's like, "How? so if it is that you father bastards, you're no different, you're no better than me, Ned Stark. You're no better than Robert or Jamie or me. You're, you just do what you want to do. You just go with your desires. At the end of the day, you're no better than us. You're no Batman. You're just another fucking joker. Moral relativism or something is perhaps what Cersei's going for here. Although, of course, Cersei does not know the truth. The truth, of course, being that Ned did not sleep with some whore or sleep with some Ashara Dane. Uh, it seems as though the real truth is that Lyanna was, 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 was John's uh, parent. Uh, but anyway, so Ned's like, all right. Ned doesn't try to slap her with that particular truth yet. Ned just says, all right, well, for a start, the difference between me and you is I don't kill kids. Um, uh, and so I'm going to settle this. I'm going to settle this conflict peacefully and rightfully. Uh, I'm going to warn you. I'm going to lay out the truth to Robert Baratheon when he comes back. I'm telling you now, I'm going to tell Robert about the incest, uh, and you better be gone by now. You should run away to Essos. You should get away as far away as you can, because Robert is going to try and kill you. He's going to want to hunt you down. So I'm warning you now to protect you and to protect your children and to save the innocents. I'm Batman. I'm not going to kill the Joker. I'm going to let the Joker go. I'm going to let, I'm going to lock Joker up in Arkham Asylum, even though I know he's going to escape for the hundredth fucking time. And I know he's going to kill the people, but Batman lets the Joker loose again because he's, he's a fucking soft cock Kantian idealist instead of a utilitarian. Uh, Ned lets Cersei go. Batman lets the Joker go. Uh, and and Ned warns Cersei that but but Robert's wrath will follow you to the ends of the earth. Robert will want to hunt you down because he will not forgive the incest. He will not forgive the infidelity. Robert Baratheon does not like to be cucked. And because uh, Robert Baratheon has been in the actual literal sense, because remember, cuckoldry is an, has an actual literal dictionary definition, which is for someone to have sex with your wife or with your married partner uh, without your knowledge or permission, or I suppose with your knowledge or permission. That is a thing on certain other corners of the internet. Point is. Uh, the, Ned says, Robert's wrath will follow you. And then Cersei says, one of her best lines in the series, and what of my wrath, Ned Stark? What of my wrath? And that says everything about Cersei Lannister, man. Because Cersei's whole thing, like I was saying, she's this knot of frustrated ambitions. All these things that Cersei craves, love, respect, power, vengeance, and she never gets them. She never gets to express her desire for these things. She wants to openly express her need for, the, for, for that love, for that incestuous love and that brutal violence and that 
un, uh, absolute power. She, wh- what about her wrath? When does she get what she wants? When's it all going to come up for Millhouse? When's it going to be her turn to be on top? In season six of the show, she gets her turn. Finally, she gets to f- express her true nature and stand up as this fiery, vengeful, terrible queen of Westeros. Of course, she's awful. <laughs> When she reveals her final form, she's awful. But I think part of why her true, her final form, when she goes Super Saiyan, part of why it's so terrible is because she's been boiled up in this tight little neurotic knot for so long, failing to express her ambitions for so long, is why she is so terrible when she blooms in green fire, as she does in season six. We're yet to fully see that in the books, but I think... In one way or another, it will come. So what of my wrath, Lord Stark? And she says, when you made a mistake, Ned Stark, you made a mistake because when, back in Robert's Rebellion, when, when, after the sack of King's Landing, when you walked into the throne room and Jaime Lannister was there and the Iron Throne, you know, you know what you should have done, Ned Stark? You shouldn't, you shouldn't have let your, your, your fat, drunk friend Robert Baratheon climb those steps. You should have taken the throne for yourself. If you were a real man, if you acted in accordance with your own agency and your own desires, if you threw away this bullshit code of ethics you claim to follow, you would have sat the throne and been the king. And Ned says that I've made a lot of mistakes, Cersei, and God knows he has. Ned has made nothing but mistakes in some of these chapters. But that was not one of them. Sitting the throne would have been the wrong move. Choosing not to sit the throne was one of the only smart decisions I've ever made. And then Cersei says, oh, but but that was a mistake. You did go wrong, Ned, because when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. And she turns up her hood and walks out of the God's Wood. The stars are coming out. Isn't that a great chapter? I think that, I think that's one of the better chapters in this book, um, because because we 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 learn so much. There's such this fascinating clash between these two characters, Cersei Lannister and Ned Stark, who are so different in so many ways, so opposite, but also both so real and tangible in their characters uh, and all their ideals and all their emotions and their passions, which are so connected to their pasts and to their futures. Uh, and, and, and connected to all these other side stories and mysteries, like all that shit about Ashara Dane and all this other stuff that we still don't know the answers to. But these, to- these this clash of philosophies, this clash of hearts, which which is so real and so so compelling, um, and which leads to so much more, so much more drama and so much more complexity in the chapters to come. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game of Thrones Bridged on Alt Swift X. Uh, there will be more of this stuff coming soon. If you enjoyed this episode, maybe consider sharing it. Uh, I think this was probably one of the better episodes. Uh, some of the other episodes are a bit shit, I'll be the first to admit. Uh, but if you like this episode, maybe maybe show it to someone who might like it. Uh, and I will have more episodes for you soon. Cheers.